Now, when Samsung recently announced their Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, I was very intrigued. It has a 14.6 inch Super AMOLED display. And at first glance, I was really excited, but I got a little hands-on time with it. And I came to the conclusion it was just too big for my type of workflow. I want to be able to take it with me on the go. It was just too big. So I went with the S8 Plus. It has a 12.4 inch Super AMOLED display. It has the same Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, and it also has an included S Pen. Let's see if this comes together to make this a winner. Hey everybody, it's Andrew, and this is my unboxing and first look review at the all new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. Coming up. Now I decided to go with the plus model as opposed to the ultra model, which has a 14.6 inch display as opposed to this 12.4 inch super AMOLED display. To me, it's more portable and fits my workflow a little bit better, but there's nothing wrong with going with that gigantic tablet, especially for media consumption and digital artwork. Having that extra screen real estate is definitely worth it. Now, before we get to the device, I want to let everybody know in the interest of transparency and full disclosure, I'm not being paid by Samsung. I'm not being sponsored by Samsung. All the opinions you're about to hear are my own. Samsung is not getting copy approval. That means they're seeing this video for the first time, just like you. Now this unit was purchased with my own money. I did not receive a review unit from Samsung. Now pricing is $899, but you can get with trade-ins and additional credits a lot less off the initial asking price. For those interested, I'll leave a link in the description below for more information and where you can buy one. And with the specs and pricing out of the way, let's find out what you get inside the box. Let's open it up. Now lifting the lid, you're greeted by the unit itself. And the first thing that strikes you is just how super thin and light this is. Really, really portable. We're gonna get to that in a moment. But you also get, of course, the S Pen. This is one of the big selling points for this tablet in the whole line, of course. It allows you to take notes and sketch out artwork. There's a lot of additional functionality that the S Pen gives you that other pens don't give you. Now they give you the USB-C cable, but there's no power adapter in the box. What the fuck, Samsung? They give you a SIM ejection tool along with a quick start guide. And I have to say, for a very expensive tablet, you don't get a lot in the box. Gone are the days of getting a case, getting a screen protector, and of course, the power adapter. To me, that's just nickel and diming the customer. All right, let's get to the tablet itself. And once you hold it again for the first time, this is super razor thin. I mean, I can't believe how thin this tablet is. And it's a premium build quality between the glass and the metal. This gives off a sleek and modern look. There's no doubt about it. And I have the graphite model. And as you can see, it shows some fingerprints. You'll be wiping it down. Now the speaker grills are located on the sides and on the top you get your power button, your volume rocker up and down and the SIM tray which houses the micro SD card or if you go with the optional 5G you'll have a SIM card slot there. And on the side is USB port that's where you'll charge this tablet. And on the bottom are the pogo pins to connect to the keyboard case. Now the S Pen sticks magnetically in the back of the unit as you see here. And while attached it will charge the pen. And of course, I connected it the wrong direction. As you see here, this is the correct way to put it onto the tablet. And apparently, it uses the same keyboard case as last year's model, the S7 Plus. So if you have that model, you'll be able to use it with this new upgraded tablet. And that's a good thing because this separate accessory costs $229. Ouch. And as it goes for keyboard covers, it's okay. It's nothing special in terms of the build quality. I would say it's okay. A little expensive, of course, for what you get. But there is a cutout for the pen. So it, when it does store and charges magnetically to the unit, you have a place to store it and you don't have to worry about losing the pen. So in that regard, it's pretty good. And as you see, the back cover sticks onto the back of the tablet and it has a kickstand, very surface-like in terms of functionality. It's pretty rigid and gives you pretty good viewing angles. And then of course, the tablet sticks magnetically to the keyboard cover, not the most secure connection when you compare it to say something like the Surface Pro 8 that I reviewed, which is a much more secure connection, something to be aware of. And here it is in action. As you can see, it goes far down as you see here. Now, setting up this Android tablet is pretty easy, especially with this One UI from Samsung. It's a pretty nice skin on top of, of course, Android 12 here. 
And you have a few choices when it comes to logging in, fingerprint scanner, or you can go with face recognition as I did, and it worked pretty well in terms of the setup, and it registered my face pretty much every time I've used it so far, looking good. And this 12.4 inch display is absolutely gorgeous. It's a super AMOLED display. What does that mean? Well, you're gonna get the really deep blacks, the super vibrant colors that just pop off the display, and it has that really high contrast to really make everything super sharp. And one thing you'll notice though, it is a very glossy display. So you'll get a lot of unnecessary glare and reflections depending on your lighting conditions. It's pretty evident as you see here. And this uses PWM or pulse width modulation. That means you're gonna see screen flickering, which causes eye strain. Certain people are susceptible to PWM. I'm not one of them, but there are people that will be susceptible to that. So if you are sensitive to PWM, I would stay away from this tablet. Now, consuming media on this has been excellent. It's an HDR display, so if you're gonna watch high dynamic range content in YouTube, Netflix, Amazon, and the like, it's gonna really shine on this panel. Now, as far as this display is concerned, and you're seeing right now HDR content, it really does enhance the viewing experience. And that's one of the reasons you'd pick up a tablet with this caliber of display. And I think Samsung makes some of the best, if not the best displays out there. I don't think there's any dispute about that. And having 120 hertz refresh rate means you're going to get the really smooth scrolling and the very fluid experience, especially when you're navigating through this one UI. Now, as far as the dex mode is concerned, I like what this feature brings to this tablet. It gives you a more PC-like experience, allow you to manipulate the windows, move them around, use it with the keyboard cover, attach a monitor or mouse or a separate keyboard. It gives you a lot of options that you don't get, quite frankly, with other tablets. And of course, using the S Pen brings a lot to the table as well, allows you to take notes, sketch out artwork. It has a very pen to paper like feel, and that's good. So I have no issues so far. I'm gonna do a long-term test with it. I'll bring you a separate video on what you can do with this S Pen, but it's a nice value add included at no additional cost. But again, at the end of the day, this is still a very expensive tablet. And so far, the speakers on this tablet are excellent. They're rich, they're loud, they have good mids, and there is bass. It fills up the room rather nicely. I'm super impressed with this tablet. Let's give it a listen in terms of that sound. Look, review, for those that didn't see it, check out the link below. I also did a comparison video with its sibling, the IdeaPad 5 Pro. Again, those video links will be in the description below. I highly encourage you to check them out. But what we're looking at here, as far as a breakdown, we're looking at the AMD Ryzen 7 5800H processor paired with the discrete GPU, the NVIDIA. So this is the front-facing camera on the brand new Samsung Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. It's a 12.4 inch device, of course, a tablet. I didn't go for the Ultra, it just seemed a little too big. I didn't like that notch, but I like this form factor, looks really good. Now this is a 1080p, 30 frames per second, front-facing camera. We'll test the back cameras very soon, but what do you think about the video quality? What do you think about the audio quality? Let me know in that comment section below. And here's the portrait mode. Let me know what you think about it. I think it's okay for a tablet. Of course, smartphones will have much better cameras, but this isn't bad for a tablet, at least in my opinion. So this is the rear facing cameras on the Galaxy Tab S8 Plus. This is UHD 4K, 30 frames per second. What do you think about the quality? I'm gonna give you some more examples very soon, but I just wanted to go out in my backyard by my pool just to give you a quick example as I just received this tablet. What do you think about the quality? Let me know. Does it look like it has some stabilization? It probably does. I'll have more info very soon. But again, I am curious to know what you think. Let me know. And again, for a tablet, these dual 13 megapixel rear facing cameras are not too bad, especially in good lighting conditions as I have here. All right, 24 hours in, so far so good with the Tab S8 Plus, and I'm glad I went with this S8 Plus with its 12.4 inch display over that 14.6 inch display, just too big, didn't really work for me. So I'm glad I'm going with this one. It's a more portable, I still get that beautiful Super AMOLED display, a lot of the same features that you'd get in that bigger tablet, just more portable, and that works better for me. But there's a lot to like here, ladies and gentlemen, especially if you like a Super AMOLED display, this doesn't disappoint. I'm looking forward to putting it through its paces and I'll bring you my long-term review. That'll be coming down the road. But so far, I'm really liking the Tab S8 Plus. I'm liking it a lot. 
So what do you think about this bad boy, the S8 Plus, as you can see, this is the type cover on it with the keyboard. It's the same one as last year with the S7 Plus. So if you have that tablet and you upgrade it to the S8 Plus, the good news is you don't have to buy another keyboard. And that is good news because this baby is $229 as a separate accessory. And considering that this tablet retails for $899 and then on $229 on top of that, you get the drift. It's a very expensive tablet. And I think having the ability to use last year's keyboard cover is a big win, especially if you are upgrading. But as far as performance, so far it's been very good. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, you're looking at that beautiful Super AMOLED display, 12.4 inches, 120 hertz. It is a very reflective display and it does use PWM as I mentioned. So if you're sensitive to screen flickering, then you might want to steer clear of this. Maybe go with the Tab S8, which uses an IPS display. But this Super AMOLED display is absolutely gorgeous. It's bright enough, I'm not really sure exact measurements, but it's definitely bright enough for my use. Very glossy, as I mentioned, but it is an HDR10 display. Watching high dynamic range content on this has been excellent. And speaking of the S Pen, this stores in the tablet. It has a little space right here. It stores and charges there. You don't have to worry about losing it. And I thought it was okay in terms of the you know note taking and the sketching out artwork. It definitely worked well. It has a very pen to paper like feel. It's been very good. This keyboard cover, I would say, is very expensive at $229. Uh, if you get it free when you did pre-order it, then it's definitely worth it. Or if you're upgrading from last year's Tab S7 Plus and you already have it, you don't need to buy it again. And that's good because it is a very expensive keyboard cover and it doesn't even have a backlight on it. So not the most strong connection either when it comes to the magnets on it. Not quite as good as the Surface Pro 8 that I recently reviewed. So not as good as far as the accessory is concerned, but what it does bring to the table is when you do connect it to this keyboard case, you are able to use it with the DeX, of course, and the DeX mode makes it more of like a PC-like experience. You can manipulate the windows much like you can in a Windows PC. You could also uh, connect to a keyboard, monitor, and mouse, and you can use it much like you would your PC. It has a lot of functionality. It's gonna be good for productivity, and I will do a long-term review on that very soon. But so far, using it with the keyboard cover here, it's actually worked very well, and I'm actually a big fan of DeX. I think it brings a lot to the table. But at the end of the day, this still is a very expensive tablet, and considering the fact they don't even give you the power charger in the box, it, to me, it just seems a little petty. Seems like they're nickel and diming the consumer, and I just don't like that trend. And that trend was started by Apple, and I don't like to see Samsung following suit. They should include the at least the power adapter in the box. I'm not asking for much. That would have been much better than not including one. Now, you do get the USB-C cable, but again, you'll have to fork over more money for another charger or use a charger you might have lying around but you should have that option. You shouldn't have to be forced to buy one if you don't have one. That's just my two cents. It lies in between the S8 and of course the S8 Ultra, somewhere in the middle. To me, it's the sweet spot. It's not too big, it's not too small, just right for my travels. And that fits into my workflow a little bit better than say a 14.6 inch screen as you would get on the S8 Ultra. I'm curious to know what you think. Again, let me know in that comment section below. So please hit the like button, please subscribe, please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll do my best to try to make that happen. Don't forget to check me out on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, my website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.